record. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> okay. So today we have Cecilia Saavedra. She has a background in horticulture and environmental science, and she is also a part of the Científico Latino 2020-2021 Graduate School Mentorship Initiative Scholar Program. She was also part of the 2020 USDA Sustainable High Valley Horticulture and Processing System Internship. She currently works as a family garden instructor and Cultivadora de Salud for the Latino Center of the Midlands, and also as a garden technician at Whispering Root. Cecilia, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thank you, Gladia, for uh, having me in this amazing uh, area and spot and interview. <laughs> thank you. Um, so I'm going to get started uh, with asking you, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your work? And how did you get into this field? And where does your passion for the work come from? Yeah. Yeah, so my name is Cecilia and I've been working in ag uh, for a few years now and uh, currently right now I'm a student at UNO and majoring in environmental science, focused in geographic and planning. And then, uh, so this will be my last, so after, my hopes is that once I'm done with school is to continue my education and by eventually getting a master's in and a PhD in food systems. Um, it's a growing field right now and it's important to do a lot of research in that area. And uh, just when my passion comes from my grandma and my parents teaching me about the love of ag and and as well as protecting the environment, especially with climate change, that is a, an important issue that it's gonna be affecting a lot of uh, BIPOC communities around the world and, and just in our backyards as well. Um, I enjoy growing produce, sharing it with my neighbors and community members who are in need. And um, I want to make sure that BIPOP communities have equal access to healthy, nutritious food and to making sure as well as to empower them uh, by growing their own uh, produce. Uh, and uh, I know my parents, my parents are from a small village in Michoacan, Mexico. Uh, there were farmers and they were able to grow a lot of corn, garbanzo beans, squash, peppers, cucumbers, avocados, papayas, mangoes. And so they taught me a lot um, during the process. And and one of the things that they always make sure is that they will pass down the traditional, you know, how to keep my seat, uh, how to protect the seeds that were in our family uh, for many generations and continue that diversity for the future. Um, and so I, I'm a seed collector from, um, I have a seeds from Mexico and uh, I just, you know, I like to grow them and that's another way to get connected to the, my roots. Uh, and yeah, I just love help, you know, I just love um, hands-on growing um, and helping out the community, especially now with the pandemic, um, yeah. we've seen a lot. For sure. I, I think I share the same background. My dad comes from a small town in, in Mexico as well. Um, and he's talked about, you know, loving farming the land and growing his own produce. And he has a small garden himself at home, not as big as yours. So uh, to follow up with that, um, I know that you and your family grow your own food and you have your own garden full of vegetables and fruits, like you mentioned, that are indigenous to Mexico. Can you tell me a little bit about like what you have grown in the past year and why you decided to grow this kind of product, pro produce. Um, and, uh, you know, just a little bit more about, you know, that background. Yeah, uh, so my parents, um, you know, they came to Nebraska just to, uh, originally went to California and then they decided to come to Nebraska uh, just because it was more affordable living. And so once they got a, their, little casita, little house uh, with a large backyard. Uh, they started to, they started their, their gardens at really small. And as like years continue and I grew up with, you know, with the gardening aspect, uh, our gardens continued to grow and grow. And I, we became more ambitious and, and to a point that we were, what we call is we were farming our own garden. And so um, our backyard, I think last year we, um, we ripped up all the grass from our yard and we planted a, uh, our backyard space is about 4,200 square space. And uh, we were using intensive growing systems. So we were max we were using every space um, to grow our produce. And so one of the things that we, uh, some of the 
cultural foods that we were growing were tomatoes, uh, tomatillos, jicamas, peppers, both sweet and hot. Um, and then we made sure to do the three sisters, which is um, corn, uh, beans, and calabazas. Um, and then zucchinis, cucumbers, kohlrabi. Uh, it's also known in, as nabo since, uh, and uh, broccoli, cabbage, garanzos, lettuce, carrots, cilantro, manzanilla, uh, eggplants, epatsose, uh, onions, papalo, and uh, some an herb, uh, there are a lot of other herbs uh, that are kind of uh, grown over there in Mexico. Uh, and so we were using that more medicinal herbs uh, just to help us out <laughs> during yeah. pandemic. Yeah, no, that's amazing. I, I know that you, you know, um, you've just mentioned all of these like herbs that my parents are very familiar with. And I've seen how uh -huh. you use your own produce to like make your own tortillas and your own like, uh, oh my goodness, uh, uh, your own masa to make your tortillas and all of that uh, great stuff that I grew up eating as well. So how do you think a lot of this work that you've done with your family has translated into your professional work with the Latino Center and with Green Roots? Uh, yeah, yeah. So one of the things I'm trying to do is to empower the Latino community by uh, for them to grow their own um, produce. And so you guys, um, we, we sh in the sense of that, we shouldn't be relying on our food system because as of right now, it's super fragile and anything could break and then it's going to be difficult or it's just, it's very complicated right now. And I feel like being able to grow your own food and essentially make your own masa uh, using the corn that you grew, uh, is essentially very powerful. Um, it's a sense of connecting yourself to your culture, your roots, um, and making sure that you're eating healthy as well. Um, Non-processed foods. This is what our ancestors used to eat thousands of years ago, and uh, they survive. And I think we could still continue doing that and eating nutritional foods um, as you know as the pandemic continues on. And and that's that's one of the main reasons why I like to showcase. Um, you know, pictures online is that I want uh, community members to know that it's possible to continue that legacy of growing your own produce like we did in Mexico, like my parents did here, and we're able to have the same access of nutrition and um, and delicious food <laughs> from our culture. Yeah, no, that is, I mean, honestly, I follow you on Facebook and I really enjoy looking at your pictures and I'm like, man, I wish I was growing my own stuff so that I could do that. And I know that, you know, you're a good like person to like look for like inspiration and tips about growing like food that is indigenous to Mexico. So I really appreciate that. I know you mentioned in your, like in, the, in our previous question, COVID and growing your own food. So over the past year, we have seen how COVID has increased the number of people who are food insecure. Can you talk to me about what you are seeing out in the community and how this has shifted your work? Yeah, yeah. Uh, COVID-19 has impacted communities of color, um, especially on top of that, it's more racial and ethnic disparities in healthcare. Um, at, and I mean, we, many of these communities are also facing, you know, higher mobility and mortality. Um, compared to white folks. And so by looking at the, you know, numbers and everything, we noticed there's, you know, the uh, BIPOC communities were hit harder than uh, compared to white uh, folks. And so there's a lot of things going on, you know, systematic racism, um, the defending of many programs. Uh, and and so that's a, a, you know, many of our community members are also facing, you know, a lot of pre-existing conditions, health issues, and um, unable to get those benefits as well, especially if they're undocumented. Um, so, you know, a lot of, and on top of that, you know, some of us were living in multi-general, uh, multi-generational homes. So we have our grandma and everybody. And so when COVID hit, um, that was, it was horrible. Many of these, you know, households were suffering, um, you know, economically, uh, food, um, and so uh, that's one of the things that I noticed is that um, when we Omaha went to a lockdown in March, uh, one of the things I saw is that, you know, 
Latinos work in mostly in the service industry. And so most of them were, um, you know, they were kind of saying like, where am I going to feed my kids or where am I going to get food? And so that's essentially why my siblings and I started the Omaha Secret Helper, um, just to help ease that, especially in the vulnerable communities and immunocompromised and um, and then low income uh, families. And so we had to make sure that we were giving them culturally appropriate foods. Uh, and I noticed that I already had a feeling that this was gonna be a, it's gonna be a couple years of work that needed to be done. And so that is why I kind of, you know, so many things happened that during that time that I was like, um, I think we should start planning our garden to uh, to plan more culturally appropriate foods because um, one of the things I noticed is that there's a lack of cultural foods growing. Um, and so I want to essentially give some of these produce to, you know, many family members um, so they can make their traditional foods at home. Um, and, and I think, yeah, I think when COVID hit, you know, a lot of, you know, the moment they got COVID, they lost their income, um, and it, especially that we're getting pay, uh, paycheck to paycheck, um, that really disrupted their their system, and um, the, which is why I kind of started so many projects. I think in the last year it was it was time consuming, but it was worth it because uh, you know the community needed it. Uh, and then another thing is that I helped out um, if people had questions. I had like a personal sessions with many community members on how to start their garden and what to grow. Uh, same thing with my my background or uh, my backyard garden. And then I also helped, uh, we started a urban farm at the University of Nebraska at Omaha on 40th and Charles. Um, and we wanted to focus also as well, um, food insecurity and college students. And so I think this year, uh, 2021, we're gonna be actually, uh, growing stuff now, and then giving the produce to the college students who are in need. And then um, on top of the work that we did in both in Whispering Roots and Latino Center, we try to maximize our help with the Latino community and other communities in the area. Uh, so they have the access to eat well. Yeah, well, that's, that's amazing. And you had a really, really busy year, it sounds like, but... Um, <laughs> And just my last question to you is where can people follow you to learn more about the work that you are doing? Yeah, yeah. Um, you guys could follow me um, in Instagram, which is Flower Cecilia 27 Or you could also as well follow uh, my fa personal Facebook, which is Cecilia Saavedra. Um, and uh, some of the awesome organizations as well is uh, Latino Center of the Midlands. You guys could follow them. Uh, and we'll be just, you know, showing off a lot of our work there and Whispering Roots as well. Um, you know, these two amazing organizations have impacted the community uh, in so many ways and helping close that food insecurity gap that's going on right now with the pandemic, uh, which is exciting, uh, which is unfortunate, but then exciting that we're doing this. For sure. Well, thank you so much, Cecilia, for your time today. And um, I know that you're gonna be in our panel uh, following this presentation. So um, I hope that you folks um, have some questions for Cecilia. She will be able to answer them and follow up with you then. Well, thank you so much, Cecilia, and I hope you have a great day. Yeah, thank you.